came to play tonight. And a steal. Miller retreats to the three-point line. Weber imploring the crowd. Jimmy Smith hitting the three. Big-time plays here by Steve Smith. And welcome to Open Court, Tallest Tales of the NBA. I'm Ernie Johnson, and this should prove to be some fun. I've got seven pretty fair basketball players here to talk about just about anything we can think of. And to introduce the panel, here's well, we got a four-time champion, uh, Shaquille O'Neal, the newest member of the Turner Sports family. Uh, Hall of Famer, Dream Teamer, uh, Charles Barkley is here. Hold your applause. One of the all-time <laughs> great clutch shooters in NBA history. Reggie Miller, part of our seven-member panel. A five-time All-Star and former Rookie of the Year, Chris Webber. In 14 years, he was an All-Star and NBA champion, Steve Smith. Five-time NBA champion with the Bulls and the Spurs, Steve Kerr. And finally, two-time NBA champion and Shaq's favorite bum, Kenny, <laughs> the Jet Smith. <laughs> These men have, uh, have a lot in common, including memories of their very first day in the NBA. Philadelphia 76ers select Charles oh. Barkley of Auburn University. Ooh. The Actually, that's the Dallas back. That's, no, it ain't. That's the whole is back. Eddie Johnson barrels down the lane. With Auburn, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Foul, they're going to score, though. The Sacramento Kings select Ooh, Kenny Smith grace. from North Carolina. Still 10 on the shot clock, Kenny Smith. He's what kind of pass was that? He <laughs> didn't catch that, man. <laughs> <laughs> Willis, Willis, Willis. <laughs> Come on, man. Willis, like, you got two legends fired. Reggie Miller of UCLA. Oh, man, look at this. <laughs> Reg, oh. I had that couch. I you had still that have couch. that couch. I, that couch. I like that you couch. You still have that couch. Oh. Think about that couch. Think about that couch. You can waste a lot of food on it. Nobody will notice. And number 50, <laughs> the Phoenix Sun select Steve Kerr. University of Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> the 104-son. Selects Steve Smith from Michigan State University. Steve Smith is the two guard. Comes down, lands, he's there, and then all of a sudden he just how you get hurt? Trips over something. The, I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. With the first pick in the 1992 NBA draft, the Orlando Magic selects Shaquille O'Neal from Louisiana State University. Anderson, tough shot, forced it. O'Neal, an offensive rebound. Banks free. Jordan the ball. Oh, 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 the Jordan. 93 NBA draft. The Orlando Magic select Chris Webber. Yeah, it was me. It was me. Second phone call. Five seconds left. No, we don't know. Has traded the draft rights to Chris Webber. That's nervous. You know, you're trying not to show your nervousness, but you're showing it in every movement. Here comes Weber in the open court. Weber. Move, Kenny, move, Kenny. Weber all the way! Oh! 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 I forgot I'm at work right now. Bye, Taylor. Bye, Taylor. Bye, Taylor. Uh, uh, some, some fond draft night memories and, uh, and some of the lowlights of the careers of these seven. Hey, who, when you look around the room, Shaq, who do you think had the best pro debut? Best NBA debut of the, of the seven here? I might have to go with Steve. <laughs> Why would you go with Steve? His jumper looked nice. He was limited on his mistakes. <laughs> and he looked good doing it. Which Steve? Which Steve? Steve Kerr? Steve Kerr. Wrong Steve. It was Steve Smitty. Steve Smith. Made it, made it look easy. He even crossed his leg. That's yeah, a good you know what? You know what? He's, he's, he's in the Barker lounger over here making it look easy. No, you know what? I'm looking at my research. They were oh, down by 15. He was faking that injury because there was nobody next to you. <laughs> nobody next to you. I got hurt ah. playing defense. I got hurt playing defense. You playing defense? Yeah. You so actually I got hurt. Is. You actually had 24 in your NBA debut, and that was your season high for your rookie season. Wow. None of y'all so, had 24? I didn't, I didn't That's start. That's the most you had just your rookie Who year. Who did you play? Did you, Kenny, did you start? Yeah, I started my rookie year. But nope. that was his first, his first night in the I was NBA. And that, was, I was, and that was his season high. Yeah. So did you think they were all going to be that easy? I did. 
For sure, because I had the ball in my hand. But I, I was playing with Glenn Rice, so I had to get the ball up a little bit. And the black hole, Ronnie Cycling. But it, we, <laughs> we, we throw him under the bus. Good job. Yeah. No, no, no. Ronnie never threw the ball. Ronnie only had a career high of three assists. But it, it was, you know. Ronnie, Ronnie, you do. Ronnie, you love Ronnie. That's my guy, but he didn't pay. <laughs> Reggie, one of those nights. Yeah, Reggie, what was your welcome to the NBA moment that you knew you had, had arrived and you, and you were here? Well, I'm not necessarily thought I had arrived, but game one of preseason. This is a preseason game one. And obviously I was playing with uh, Charles's uh, Auburn teammate and Chuck Person, and he comes up to me before the game and is like, watch this little love tap I give to Dominic Wilkins. I didn't know they had beef the year before. I'm like, okay, well, whatever. And I'm sitting on the bench because I'm a rookie. None of us really started. And as soon as the jump ball went up, Chuck went right up to Dominique and gave him a forearm right in the throat. The bench is clear, everyone's getting up, and I'm standing on the sideline, and Herb Williams is next to me. I'm like, well, what should I do? He's like, Rook, you better get your behind out there and start fighting. <laughs> That's how I knew I was part of the NBA. You had to, what you can do now, right. you had to clear the benches and run out there and get Chuck's back. But you know how Chuck was. Chuck oh, yeah. Was, mm -hmm. Oh, no question. He would give it to you. How about it? I mean, you, you recall you know, preseason games being that intense? Your Only first, one. Your first season? Only one. Like, there was a noticeable difference. Like, the first couple games we were screwing around, I was really nervous playing with Doc, <clears> Moses, <throat> Maurice Cheeks, Andrew, Tony, Bobby Jones, and those guys. And the first three or four games were, you know, you're just trying to break a sweat and work on your stuff. And then we played the Boston Celtics. And you could just, I was like, wow, this is different. The locker room was quiet. And then a fight broke out during the game between Dr. J and Larry Bird. And it let me know, like, that, that was hatred between the Sixers and the Celtics. I mean, it was unbelievable intensity in a preseason game. For all of you, I mean, when you, when you reach this level, you're in the NBA. It's been a dream, I'm sure, when you're going to YMCA games at, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning and that kind of thing, and you're always thinking, boy, I'm playing the NBA someday. How do you, how does that feel when you finally realize that, Shaq? Man, you know, for me, it was fun, you know, because I grew up watching all these old-timers <laughs> on this panel, <laughs> except for Chris, but, you know, it was fun. You know, I said to myself, I made it, but, you know, the funny thing for me is I didn't know the difference between preseason and the regular season. So when I first got to the Magic, I was playing all our preseason, and Scott Scott said, hey, man, calm down. The season ain't start yet. What you mean the season ain't start? We 3-0. We right. first in the conference. <laughs> I think it's a lot more nerve-wracking than people realize. Because what you did in high school, like, okay, all of us are the big men in high school. But then when you go to college, you back to zero. I mean, you go back to zero. And then it's even worse when you get to the pros. Because like I said, I didn't start. I was a number five pick in the draft, and I wasn't even really getting to play a lot in the beginning. But it's very nerve-wracking. And there are certain things that people take for granted. Like, number one, it's kind of like you're an alien. What I mean by it is they come and pick you one day and they drop you off in the city. So first thing you have to do is find a place to live. Second is thing, Philadelphia bigger than Leeds? <laughs> <laughs> Just in that one little area. Ernie, you know, you, you, you know what's something that's funny you said? that Learning your way around these cities and trying to get there for practice in the morning or go out and get a meal... Did you miss, I, did you, were you late a couple of times to I, I was, practice, it, right? Well, first of all, I, it took me a while because you, 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 you're not getting paid. So you have they pick you up like the first <laughs> week because you, you really go right into training camp. And then most places you go somewhere. Uh, so it was very nerve-wracking. And then when I finally got a car, you know, man, I just drove around trying to figure it out the, the first couple days, and it is hectic. The biggest thing to me is there's two different, two different things. There's when you first get the playoffs, but then when you first actually be a rookie. Because all of us, when you're in college, if you have a good game, that means your team is pretty much either going to win in college or going to be close to winning because you're dominating the game. I just remember my first time having a really good game in the NBA, and I'm looking up, and I got like 23 points going into halftime, and we're down, left, we're down 11 or 14 points. So the first time in your life that you couldn't really impose everything on the will of a game, and you go, wow, this is how great these players are, that you're not the imposing force no matter how great you're playing. Steve, what was that first year like? You're playing for 
For Cotton? For Back. Cotton Fitzsimmons. Yeah. Well, you know, my experience was totally different than these guys because I was a, you know, late second round pick. I didn't know if I was going to make the league. I was on a non-guaranteed contract. And I'll never forget one of my first exhibition games, we played the Bulls. And I was just trying to make the roster. And Michael Jordan mm -hmm. gets the ball right in front of our bench. And I'm already scared to death. Like, God, I hope I don't get into this game. I'm, <laughs> I'm not ready for this stuff. And he holds the ball out. He holds the ball out and he looks right at me. And I'm on the bench just kind of like, he holds the ball and he goes, watch this. And he turns, he went right around Dan Marley, bam, dunks it, looks back at our bench and just starts laughing. And I'm looking like, there's no way in hell I can ever make this. <laughs> now I really don't want to. I thought, I, thought he looked, wow. I thought he looked at you and said, 10 years from now, I'm going to throw this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 10 years from now, I'm going to throw this. Be ready, be ready. Ernie, I know I struggle. Ernie, I struggle with downtime. After practice, being in Miami, at 1 o'clock getting out of practice, and then you got a whole bunch of free time. A lot of guys didn't struggle with the downtime. I, I struggle. I struggle. I really you struggle. struggle. Not, <laughs> not, not on Washington, Collins, and Ocean. You wasn't struggling. <laughs> when, I, when I came to the NBA, being the number one pick and coming behind Shaq, it was, uh, you know, it, it was pressure. So I, I wouldn't say I had the pressure of Steve saying, you know, I might not make the team, but I have a pressure of expectations and, you know, what do my peers think of me? Not what do they think of me, what am I make them think of me, what is this and that, but I remember going to two games specifically playing against a preseason game against the King, and I was, I was nervous, I'm watching them, you know, I'm just, because I'm still a fan, I've never met any of these players, so my first game, I'm a fan of Akeem. He's, you know, I'm looking at his legs, looking at his tonics. I'm like, yeah, I had those shoes. I'm two years, <laughs> two years <laughs> old. I say tonic shot. You know, no, tonic, <laughs> everything about, everything about Akeem. And I remember, I drove it down the lane, I spin it, I laid it up, and you know, I made a little face, I'm so excited. He, when walking to halftime, he's like, nice move. Next time, give me a shoulder. And then the next time, Sean Kemp came and I traveled, uh, pump fake three times, and, and I came down the court. Sean was like, hey, relax. Nobody's going to block your dunk. There's athletes in here. You just relax. You take it up. And I was like, wow, the veterans, they're cool because they'll knock you out coming to the hole, but they'll also give you a little bit of love. So my first year, I was a little and all, but it, it helped a lot. We are just getting started here. We got to go, and we'll be back with more watching Open Court, the tallest tales of the NBA. I look over to the bench and I see one of my idols telling Keith Cross how to stop me. I see Kareem saying, you got to do this, you got to do that. <laughs> now I'm pissed. Kareem, wake up. Oh, now so I'm like, give me the ball. in the careers of all seven of these players. We, the, the last image we saw there was, was you, Shaquille. And I don't know if when you consider your greatest nights, if it's a team thing or if it's an individual thing, but as, as a member of four championship teams and also a guy who has scored 61 points in a game, how do you classify it? I'm going to have to go with the individual thing, and that probably was my best game. Uh, that night, it was my birthday, and we had a party. So, you know, usually, uh, <laughs> so usually I go home. Before eat. or after the game? No, after the game. <laughs> 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 in the game. Party, so, you know, usually I go home, eat lunch, take a nap, and get ready for the game. But we played against 
the great Keith Kloss and the L.A. Clippers. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm taking the night off. I got to get ready for the party. I got the Bentley. I got my suit. So I'm going to go, you know, I'll, uh, I'll shave. We're going to beat them. So we get out there, and they and they killing us. Now everybody looking at me. So now I got to play. I didn't get my nap. I'm getting tired. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm just scoring. So I look over to the bench, and I see one of my idols telling Keith Claus how to stop me. I see Kareem saying, you got to do this, you got to do that. <laughs> now I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kareem, Blake, oh, now so I'm like, give me the ball. So I'm, I'm scoring, I'm scoring, and, you know, I get 61, I'm throwing lobs, and I'm actually kind of upset at Phil because I think we had, like, five minutes left, and he took me out. I think he did that because he didn't want me to score more than Mike. That's what I think. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm what saying, I think. saying, so saying six, we was, right. 61 points. Yeah. 61 points, 23 yeah. rebounds yeah. against I was hot. Keith Claus. Was hot. Video game. The great. Yeah. And still great. went to the party. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, went to the party. <laughs> Jet, we saw the, your performance from, from long range in the, in the finals on the, the greatest stage the game has. Uh, when you see that, um, what comes to mind about, about that night and about just that moment? And you saw your dad. I saw my dad. The, actually, that was the Knicks finals, but when we played Orlando, uh, you know, that, that was probably the <laughs> most memorable individual night, only because... We, you know, we were Western Conference teams, and so we really didn't play against them that much. We only played against them twice. And so you might be catching them on a back-to-back. -back. They might be catching us on the three nights and four, five games, whatever, whatever three, three games, whatever. So you don't really feel like you're always your best in the regular season. So we didn't know what they were. And then all of a sudden, we're at our best, they're at their best, and they go up about 17 points. And we really didn't think we could beat them. And it was, it was kind of a... A, a shocking wake-up call that because they were young. How does they that make ferocious. you feel now? You hear that? I told Brian Hill we don't need to double. Listen, Akeem gonna get this 27. <laughs> I'm gonna get my 25. Now you know we he doubling and he just kept kicking out to Kenny and I think you had what seven threes again? Uh, NBA record somewhere. Like yeah. oh. I lost count. I lost count at like five or six. Yeah. Record book. Oh, 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 hey, Rich, Rich, I lost count at like five. <laughs> Time, seven out of 11. <laughs> I kept saying, stop doubling them, man. Well, we got to stop a king. Well, they got to stop me, too. Stop doubling. Yeah. It, you double and they kick it out, and then you got to worry about him. You got to worry about Big Shot Bob. Yeah. It was It was, it was, it was a, it's a great feeling because it's the biggest stage at the same time, and you're having one of your better games in the, in the biggest stage individually. But it was more rewarding for the team because we didn't think we could beat them. That was game one? That was game one. Yeah. We, we, we were really shocked. That they were that good. Hey, Steve, when we, you know, we've seen the video before too of the huddle beforehand. He comes off. I'll be ready. You should take me through that. And again, you talk about big stages, where Kenny's talking about hitting all those threes. Game on the line in the NBA Finals, and uh, and it was your moment. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been replayed on NBA TV several times, so I always have the uh, TiVo ready and <laughs> gather the family around. Uh, no, I mean, you know what? It, it's, that's the moment that every kid dreams of, and, and to actually have lived it is, is pretty incredible. But, you know, I, I, I didn't have a great series, but I was having a decent game. I just made a few shots. Of course, I was feeling pretty good, and Michael was always looking ahead to what was next. He was always kind of envisioning the next play. And he just, he said during the timeout, he said, Stockton's going to come double team me, so be ready. And, and I, I looked way more confident in that shot than I really was. I was like, <laughs> oh my God, okay. <laughs> but I just said, you know what, just fire away. And that's, I mean, that, that's the, the best advice anybody ever gave me was don't think, shoot. You know, as soon as you start thinking, that's when you miss. And, and I just made up my mind. If I got the ball, I was going to I was gonna shoot, and luckily it went in. Hey, Charles, sometimes, you know, when you, you talk to a baseball pitcher who has a big night, and they'll say, look, I really didn't feel it in the bullpen beforehand, didn't feel like I had my great stuff, and he throws a one-hitter. Um, <laughs> is there any way to, to foretell a 56-point night? No, no. Uh, <clears throat> First of all, that wasn't my best game. That was a, the night I scored. Oh, excuse me. Best yeah. numbers. No, that was the best. Oh, no, I'm saying that best was the best numbers. The, no, no, no. I'm saying, that was the most points I scored in the game. But I actually personally think game seven to get to the finals is the best game I ever played. I had 44 and 24. That was actually, the, the, the game against the Warriors was only a first round playoff game. But to get to the finals, I remember it was a game seven's a no joke. 
<laughs> but to get to the finals for my first time and to score 44 and 24, that's the best game I ever played. The game against C. Webb and those guys was just revenge. That was, that was by Byron Houston. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 we that told Coach, don't let did. Byron Houston check the check. <laughs> like, no, he's strong. He's like, he's six foot one. Don't let him check, don't let him check Big Chuck. Because that, that game was so funny Byron. because I, I remember. Yeah, Byron Houston. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> no, and I remember I, I went to the bench and I said, you're not going to double me? He said, nope. Because I had a triple-double. I think that was game three. So I had a, a triple-double I had a triple double game one. I had about uh, eight assists in game two. So Nelly says, we're not going to double you tonight. I says, you're not? So I scored like 17 points the first quarter. So I run over again. I said, let me ask you, you're not going to double me. <laughs> <laughs> he says, you can get as many as you want. I said, okay. <laughs> that was done. Hey, you know, when, when we looked at that video of, of you hit nine threes that night, we were looking at the video, and, and what everybody on the panel was doing is saying, give us a straight face. You, there was no emotion on your face. It was just like, this is what I do. It was. We were losing that game. But I think my, my individual <laughs> game that I really remember, I was traded for Steve Kerr and Derek Anderson from Portland. And it's the business of basketball. I drove up. To Seattle, just visit Bob Witts at our general manager, because it was trade rumors about me getting traded. And he said, "Oh no, Steve, you're not going anywhere." The next morning, I was traded. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So Kenny, I marked that game when we went back to Portland. I was eight for eight from behind the line, and I was really mad at Pop. I remember mad at Pop because he took me out, Rich. I, I mm -hmm. wanted that. Let, let me have that game. Eight for eight. I got a tech because I was going at Bob Witts, the general manager. You, you were glaring at it. He was sitting, I went at it. He the, was sitting with Paul basket. Allen. And every time I hit a shot, Reg, I kept looking at it. <laughs> that was the game for me because I had x that game because he had told me you wouldn't get traded, which that's the business. By the time I got back home from driving to Seattle, he traded me the next morning. Wow. When we looked at your 51-point game. I don't know who was in that video more, you or Reg. Uh, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, did Thanks, come, it did come against the Indiana Pacers. What do you remember about that night? I remember the whole night. I remember uh, I usually wasn't late for games. I tried to get to the game. You know, it's an hour and a half. I wanted to get there like an hour 10 and get in my own space. In this game, it was... I was later than that, and I, you know, just wasn't feeling it. I grew up, Isaiah Thomas was one of my favorite players from the Pistons. He was the coach. Reg, one of my favorite players. And Jalen, I just remember being uncomfortable. The game, getting there late, you know, not feeling good. And then during the game, it just all came out. Kind of how you said, a pitcher. You know, I didn't have any type of feeling. I knew I took a lot of shots, but I remember I kept missing layups. So I, I remember took a lot of shots. I took, <laughs> no, Steve, Steve, I promise you, Steve, if you look at that game, I don't know how many shots I took, a prior million. I guarantee you I missed 13 tipbacks. I guarantee you I had to miss 10 layups that night. So I just remember that, you know, had a lot of energy, took a lot of shots. <laughs> we'll, save that, we'll save the day at the garden for last here, Reggie, because when we look at that video and everybody, it means something to everybody here. I mean, and they all look at it and say, man, I can't believe that was, you know, it's eight points in 8.9 seconds or whatever, however you break it down. But uh, did you know that ball was going in? Do you know those balls are going in? It's, it's almost like you knew. Just give me a shot at it. I will make it. Well, a lot to what Steve said, you know, for shooters, you just shoot, you don't think. And basically, you're just reacting in that situation. But, I mean, that's the uh, eight points in nine seconds, whatever, is the great game. But to me, what's more memorable was the 25-point quarter I had against the Knicks in the conference finals the year before in 94. Here's Miller. Swings away and hits. Reggie Miller is on fire. Miller open again. His foot on the line. That's a two-pointer. Reggie Miller giving the choke sign to Spike Lee. You know, we're all talking yeah, about yeah, games. Yeah. The choke sign. <laughs> choke <laughs> sign. It, it, it's the playoff games, and most of these, what we're talking about, are playoff games, which everyone is alluding to, because obviously that's when the pressure is probably at its greatest, and you've got to play your best. So that's what you try to remember the most. You, you ready? You know what's interesting about that game? We had the next TV game, so we all had to leave for the game. We like, when we got to the game, we said, man, the Knicks beat the, the Pacers today. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? They're like, the Knicks won the game. They're like, you didn't see the last couple seconds? Reggie went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, no, oh, the Knicks won that game. <laughs> and we had to go back and look at the highlight, and we were like, that's unbelievable. And, and a footnote to this entire segment, uh, the field goal attempts for Chris Webber. I figured you were going to say that. 47. Oh, 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 o
two of the best shooters in the game say. Forty. Think about it. Let it go. I wasn't thinking that night. I wasn't thinking that night. Forty. Oh. And that's yeah. and that's the reason that he is shot fifty percent. He is still <laughs> shot fifty percent. Still wow. icing the right shoulder, even as we speak. Forty. Seven. Forty. That's All right, back man. with more open court after this. <laughs> that's that's a feat in itself. And Doug walked away, so Keith got up running, Rich, full sprint. And Doug knew he was coming and turned and tagged him. Pat was showing that tape. You guys are not tough. You're not fighter. Yeah. Look at Keith asking. <laughs> the dog is like, hey, coach. <laughs> hey, hey, coach, Keith getting his ass whooped. <laughs>
his personality was so different off the court sometime than it was on the court. And he was the only guy when we played Chicago. We had success, actually, against the Bulls in the regular season. We only played in the regular season. But we had some success because he tried to fight Michael Jordan every time. And every game, he tried to fight Michael. And Michael, you know, as tough mind that he is, it really didn't get under him until one day, after every fight, he would bring his son in afterwards to get his autograph. So Michael says, something's wrong with this guy, Kevin. <laughs> right? Like, he fights me every day, and then right after, he brings his son in, wearing an all J Air Jordan apparel. <laughs> <laughs> and he's bringing him in the autograph. Like, he's not right. So I'm like, That's right. Like, yeah, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, right. We got him, buddy. Right. We got him. Yeah. <laughs> Kenny, Kenny, you play with Dr Dream Thorpe. Vernon Maxwell was your bodyguard? Another now, guard? Ver Another guard, though. With, but they you didn't have a big guy. They didn't mess with Vernon. Sorry. Like, in practice, no, they didn't mess with... But Vernon, they would, they would attempt to mess with Vernon. However, Vernon would follow through on the act. So if Vernon said, I'm going to hit you, he would hit you the next play. Vernon says, I'm going to trip you in the air... He would trip you in the air the next... He delivered on his messages. That's why he was the most feared right, guy. I will say this one thing. Yeah. You talk about teams, we got to talk about the bad boy Pistons. Mm. Now, let me tell you something. They had a reign of terror there for a few years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When, when you went to the basket, you were going to get hit like three times. I played with guys who were terrified to go near the basket. But you knew any time you went against Lambeau, Mahorn, Dennis Rodman, John Sally, James Edwards, you were going to get hit and you were going to get hit hard. And they had that rule, too, that, I, that if someone get fouled, then the second foul is Doesn't count. You yeah. weren't going to get no three-point yeah. plays. Right, right. Yeah. so they hit you, and then the second guy, would, everybody would just gang up on you. And the good guy on that team Joe Dumars. Joe Dumars. Yeah. And Joe, when I'm trying to take him, he's like, Reg, don't go by me now. Come on now, just settle out here and take right. jump shots. I'm like, why? You like look behind. Like, oh, Don't go in there. Okay. All right, Steve. All right. What's the toughest thing about being an NBA enforcer? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked, Ernie. Uh, you know what I remember? I mean, all, we saw a lot of those highlights where all these fights happen. And, and Reggie, you mentioned it. If you're on the bench when all this stuff happens, okay, now you get suspended if you leave the bench. But back then, you, it was understood as a teammate you had to go out there, and it was also an automatic five thousand dollar fine. And I think it was 2500 for a while, and they upped it to five grand. But here's what would happen with guys like me. You're sitting there. You're making minimum salary, okay? <laughs> Fight starts. You go, you look around, you're like, I got to go out there. Otherwise, I'm not backing my guy up. And you're like, and th nothing happens when you go out there. Everybody holds each other. But if you don't go out there, you're not backing up your guy. So you're kind of like, there goes five grand. <laughs> <laughs> and, and nothing happens. Like, because well, have no is he worth here. five grand? <laughs> because you know the next day, everybody. Oh, we watch that. Yeah, yeah. We watch it film. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It's yeah. a fire for you if you don't get off That's the right. I, I, That's I, right. I got in one of those. I didn't get in the fight. So I was talking about a little about earlier about Dr. J and Larry Bird got to fight. And what happens is, you always just grab the guy closest to you. So I, ha I happen to be standing behind Larry Bird, so I grab Larry Bird, and Dr. J just pow, 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 just lay him out. <laughs> Doc was smooth. Oh, can, can you, can you give me the Doc. sound effect one more time? Hey, hey <laughs> Doc is doing rock and rock and roll. I get fine and suspended. I'm like, why? They're like, I, I said, I tried to break up the fight. They said that I was holding Larry Bird. <laughs> <laughs> I taught me a lesson. Just stand there. Don't do anything. How, how much of this sometimes, I guess, is heat of the moment? And, and, and sometimes, do you, would you really like to continue this outside of the parameters of a basketball court, Shaq? <clears throat> uh, not really. You know, it's all about, you know, it's all about <clears throat> respect. Uh, I used to hate playing against the Knicks when uh, uh, Pat Riley was coaching. You was gonna have problems in there. You was gonna have problems. And see, those guys, they hit you, you hit them back. But they keep coming back. Like, usually like, when a guy hits you, you hit him back. He knows you ain't soft, so he'll leave, uh, you know, leave you alone. They just keep coming, keep coming for 48 minutes. We, we had a melee with Miami Heat and the Hawks. And like you talked about, Chuck, grabbing somebody wrong. Grant Long and Dwayne Pharrell. Grant choked Dwayne Ferrell. And the gum, the gum came, came out of his mouth. mouth. <laughs> 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 and Alvin Gentry was our coach. He was coaching the Heat. Grabbed Grant Long, which you shouldn't do. So Grant thought he was somebody else. He took Alvin. And body slam. And body slam. Broke his arm. Broke his arm. Right. 
and you heard Alvin screaming. <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> but you know, that's just a lesson. You can't go grab nobody. I'll give no you the last one. From behind. I'll give you the last word, see what. Man, I don't know about, uh, I just know one time in Sacramento, we first got there, we're playing against Utah. And Sacramento, we're, we're scared of everybody else. We've never been good. So we're trying to say it's our first playoff series. Let's go. So I tell Coach before the game, I'm going to lay out John Stock, the first player of the game. He's like, no, don't do it. I'm like, Coach, everybody, you know, we, nobody's, everybody's scared, man. I'm going to lay him out. I lay him out. First player of the game, get a technical. How'd you lay out? Uh, it was coming off a pick. He came off a pick, a flex, and I waited for him. And I mean, <laughs> it felt so good. I, just, <laughs> I came down, I laid him out. And I, I, in my head, I was like, oh, man, I hope I didn't hit him too hard. That's how good it felt. He got up, Stockton got up, he didn't Where, care. Where'd you get him? Did you get him in the chest? Or you get him I mean, here? I got him like... But I mean, like, you know, that wasn't, right that, here. Yeah, that, wasn't yeah. that bad. That wasn't that bad. No, but, but I, I got him. And after the game, you know, Stockton, he came over and he was like, yeah, good job. He, he knew what I was doing. But after the game, all I kept thinking of was, you know, we won and this is good for our team. But Stockton, he's as tough as he says he is. He's and not crying. Again? He's not. Yeah, but he's not crying. He's Still not had 20, 20. 20 yeah, I mean, but I mean, you know, but I'm just saying, yeah. Stockton, the tough guy it is. It wasn't about fighting anything. But for his team, they were tough because he didn't get up crying and flopping all that before our team, you know, it was pretty good sense. You are watching Open Court on NBA TV with our esteemed panel of experts. How'd you get it? We're not experts, Arnie. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> right now, today, <laughs> if there was one game, like he was saying, you could not give a team five minutes five to ten minutes right now you could not give a team oh not right now i could hell to the no <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding me as Kenny said, who, who hits all the big shots. Free three, three, three. You're the only one standing up there, man. Three, for real? You want me to come up and apply for the New York Knicks general manager job? And we uh, welcome you back to Open Court. Um, we're talking about life after basketball, who has aged the best? Who has aged most gracefully? After basketball, you're saying? Yeah. And I'm looking, I'm, Charles, you're 48 years old now, yes. correct? Uh, that would make you the oldest person on this panel. Are you talking about face or body? Uh, in, terms of, <laughs> in, terms of, in terms of players. Kenny's <laughs> body under the waist <laughs> is the oldest <laughs> up here. <laughs> under the waist. What? There's a couple people catching you, me on you this panel. You've aged under the waist. You've aged. Your knees have aged. There's a couple hey, people. If, you, if you're going to go by looks, me and C-Webb got that wrapped up real <laughs> long. Yeah. 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 Steve Kerr is a... A Are a, you kidding me? But you, Man, you, you and please. Steve can go for uh, three, another three spot. <laughs> I'll tell you this: if I had to take one guy on the panel to play one NBA game, Reggie Miller, I'm taking Reg. Now, I, now he'll be sore and he'll break down the next day. But one game, I think you could play one, well, one it, NBA game. It was relatively recently that overtures were made yeah. to you, right, Reggie? What, no, no, that wasn't, wasn't there a team? Earned. Wasn't there a team in Boston within the last couple of years that, that thought, hey, maybe, Reg, if you'd like to, you know? Does it, do you ever think about that? No, no, I don't. Just for the simple fact of what Steve said, it's the after factor. Ernie, it's, how close were you, 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 you? I was close. If Danny would have called in July as opposed to mid-August, late August, I probably would have gave it a better shot because he only gave me two or three weeks to get in shape. If he would have gave me the Did whole you summer, actually go out and start working Oh, out? yeah. And then how did you feel when you were doing you like, it's, I'm not me? Too much, there, was, there wasn't enough ice to put on my body <laughs> that could have helped, helped me feel any better. Listen, it, it's always amazing to me when people, like, you retire because you can't play. Because playing any sport is so hard on your body. And... You, your body might look the same, like Reggie and Steve, uh, you know, they, and Steve over here, uh, like, their bodies look good, but 
Air don't air don't hit back. <laughs> when you're just shooting around in the gym what? by yourself. <laughs> so your body doesn't look good. Huh? But let me ask you a question. Chuck, let me ask you a question. Right now, today, <laughs> if there was one game, like he was saying, you could not give a team five minutes, five to ten minutes right now. You could not give a team. Oh, not right now, I could. Hell to the no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? Kidding me. I I know. Know. I Jack, you shouldn't be laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, got, you got her just running up the court. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, one minute he come, like, he just run. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you, know the, you know the sign when you know you're getting old. <laughs> like, when, you, when you're young and you get a steal, and you, you know, everybody get a steal and you take that little glance back to see who's coming and, and you see everybody pulling up. They're like, because he's going to dunk it. And then about, about your eighth, ninth year in the league, when you get the Lord, steal please. and you take that picture and everybody's right. like this. I did exactly that on that play. I remember, I remember Jamal Tinsley got the steal and I remember him flicking ahead and I did exactly that because you're taught, take, take a, a picture. picture. So boom, I got it. I took the picture. Tayshawn was five steps behind me. I'm like, I have this in the bag. Right. Couple steps, and I'm going to be there. Could I have finished and dunked at 37? Perhaps. But I figuring, look, I'm teaching the kids. I'm just going to lay it up off the basketball. All about the, the next kids. thing I know. Oh. Father time caught you. That's who caught you. Oh, it wasn't about the kids. A big man, Chuck, when you, you know when a guy get old, and you can see it in any, any big man, but especially when a guy do like this. When you start pump faking and nobody's around you, right. and you just, cause I started pump faking in my mind, I'm like, what are yeah. you pump faking for? <laughs> nobody. I'm like, I could dunk this for these, and I'm thinking, no, he hey, can catch you and block you at the rim. Imagine if you're six five. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, I was talking to Larry Johnson one time about like when he lost his explosion when he's six five. And I lost mine. I said, dude, these boys big out here. My, la my last year, I had to go to the chiropractor at the end of every week. Because I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was pump faking like hell. Remember, when, remember the time when the rim used to look little? I was, yeah. Like, it's slow, yeah. ain't it? <laughs> like, or you just jump up <laughs> and right, right. for no reason. And all of a sudden, you'd be like, yo, you know, I'm tired of hey, hey, hey. <laughs> no, Reggie, Reggie talking about he thought about Duncan. My last couple years, you know, the, I had to have perfect conditions. Yeah. I had to have be going downwind. Yeah. <laughs> I, had to, I had to get my steps correct. Just to think about hey, that, hey, that door's got to be open. The little <laughs> prevailing breeze. Hey, that was my whole career. <laughs> can you imagine? You imagine you are going to miss it this year, Shaq, being away from it for the first time? Not really, because like Chuck said, you just realize you, you know, you can't play anymore. Like, I can remember times under the basket where I, you know, get my little shimmy move and, and, and I'm like, damn, I, I go up to dunk it and I couldn't even dunk it, I couldn't even finger roll. So, I mean, I realized it was, it was over for me, but I'm 39, I'm sexy, I still got booty. Quit stealing my line. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Ridge, I remember the play when I knew I was done. I was playing with the Bobcats and Bernie Bickerstaff had me at the four. And I went to step out. <laughs> at the floor. That's the first sign, Ken. That's, that's the first sign right there. You move from point guard to the floor. Oh, four. Four. Yeah, that's the floor. So Jamal Crawford was coming, and I steps on the baseline, you know, the high screen. He threw it through my legs and laid it up. And all I could see was Bernie. And Bernie go, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach was telling me it's time. And I didn't want to believe it. But Bernie said, it's time. I, 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 it was time. I tell you what I, I tell people. They say, how do you know it's time? <laughs> I said, when guys who can't play dead are <laughs> kicking your ass. Yeah. I said, this time, that guy can't play it. He's killing me. Uh, He's killing me. He can't play dead. It's time for me to sit at right. home. Uh, I am 55. I'm sexy, and I still got big. <laughs> I got more open court on the way. I haven't seen an expert panel like this in 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well sign us up. Well, the good thing about this panel, everybody can hold their own. Everybody play at a yeah. high level. But I'm, but I'm saying, like, everybody oh. is, like, can be normal and talk. Uh, for more open court, you can check us out on NBA.com right. and on NBA <laughs> TV. And we have, we have just one little, one question here, and, and you can frame it any way you want. The ideal meal, if you can only have uh, one thing, our producer Tim Kiley likes to say, if the, you know, if you were 
for your last time. meal on earth, uh, whatever, in whatever context. Reggie, what is it? Fried chicken, mac and cheese, mashed potatoes with blueberry cobbler. Feeling you. Top it off. That's Check. how you got that. Check, I know we don't have a whole lot of time. Can you? I'm just big boned it. <laughs> My appetizer is going to be a uh, brownie. A brownie? Yeah. <laughs> brownie. <laughs> vanilla brownie. ice cream with that hot fudge on that thing. Appetizer? Uh -huh. Yeah, appetizer. Okay. Then I'm going to go with the sausage and cheese omelet, fries, and a Diet Coke. And what's <laughs> and if you have a brownie for an appetizer, yes. what's for dessert? No dessert. Okay. No dessert. You don't want to do oh, dessert. Man. It's too much. Yeah, I'm going to go uh, fried chicken, potato salad, and um, peach cobbler at the end. Keep it simple. I'm with you. I'm going, I'm going my mom's fried chicken, yeah. my auntie's peach cobbler, and some mac and cheese. Not the, not the runny mac and cheese. Oh, you got to have... It got to be the... It's got to have that, and, sticky, and you've got cake. to have that top that's kind Too of layered, round and, and, and oh, crunchy. I like that too. Whew. I can't wait to hear this one. I'm gonna go with some chitlins. <laughs> oh my oh God! God. <laughs> Come on! Did you clean them yourself? You gonna clean them yourself? No, 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 no. No, no, no. no, I, I, no, no I, I'm rich now. I can pay somebody to clean them. Okay. Oh my God. Some greens and ham hocks. Ham hocks. Ham hocks. Yeah, you put the ham hocks in the greens. We know what greens. I do some. I do some potato salad. I had some good uh, pancake uh, uh, bread. Batter. Buttery pancake bread. Y'all hate it. Drink the what is pancake <laughs> bread? Pancake <laughs> mix? Pancake, they like need a whole box of pancakes. No, pancake, uh, pancake, pancake cornbread. Okay, go ahead, uh, Steve. Tough act to follow, obviously. What I'm, are you? I'm, a, I'm a sushi guy. I realize that's, you know, not quite as... Kenny, you're next. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that was a rice loaf. Sushi, Thanks, sushi. 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 Like sushi. Sushi with, with what else? Like seared ahi, a big, you know, I love ahi. Uh -huh. good, good, you know, hey, I'm big Asian food guy. An OE? I'd have, a, <laughs> I'd have a variety of what everyone said except for the ham hocks and pancake juice. Pancake <laughs> 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 bread. Pancake juice. What was the pancake stuff? Oh, it's open court. Batter and drink. <laughs>